Hi everyone, and welcome to my presentation where we will explore the life and career of architect Zaha Hadid. We will journey through her early life, education, and career, and then explore some of her amazing creations. Zaha Hadid was an Iraqi-born British architect who helped revolutionize modern architecture and the role of women in it. She was born on October 31, 1950 in Baghdad, Iraq, and died March 31, 2016 in Miami from a sudden heart attack that was a complication from bronchitis. Zaha grew up in a wealthy family. Her father was an industrialist who co-founded a significant political organization in the 30s and 40s and was co-founder of the National Democratic Party in Iraq. Her mother, an artist from Mosul, and her brother was a writer, accountant, and expert on Arab affairs. Her interest in architecture was sparked while traveling as a child through southern Iraq. In the 1960s, Hadid attended boarding schools in England and Switzerland. After that, she went on to study math at the American University before moving to London to study at the Architectural Association. Zaha was a very decorated architect winning multiple awards and recognitions throughout her career. To name a few, she was given the Royal Institute of British Architects, Architects Award, which aims to support British architects and introduce new people to the world of architecture. She was also the first woman solo architect to win this award. She was the first woman to win the Pritzker Architectural Prize, which is essentially the Nobel Prize in Architecture. She was ranked 69th on the Forbes list of the world's 100 most powerful women and was named by Time magazine as an influential thinker in the Time 100 issue. She was listed at number 42 in an annual survey of the world's 50 most influential figures of 2010. She won the Sterling Prize, the UK's most prestigious award for architecture, two years running in 2010 and 2011, and in 2012, she was knighted Dame of the British Empire. The architectural style of Hadid is not, easy, not easily categorized, and she said she did not follow any one style or school. She described her design style very simply as, the idea is not to have any 90 degree angles. In the beginning, there was the diagonal. The diagonal comes from the idea of the explosion, which reforms the space. This is where her signature flowing style evolved from. She would not compromise her concepts or designs for practical constraints or technology. Instead, her swooping, curved, futuristic buildings tended to be structurally intricate. Throughout her career, she designed everything from a metro station in Saudi Arabia to the National Center for Contemporary Arts in Rome to an 11-story condo complex in New York's Highland Park, all in her signature flowing style. Next, we will explore two of Zaha's most prominent works of art. The first is the Bako building in Belgrade, Serbia. Covering an area of around 94,000 square meters, the building includes apartments, offices, leisure facilities, a five-star hotel, a congress center, galleries and shops, as well as underground parking facilities for visitors and residents. It's evident the design style of this complex is signature Zaha Hadid. Influence came from the 20th century modernist architecture, combined with her dramatic flowing style. The idea is for the cluster of buildings to appear to flow into one another. As you can see, the, space, the spaces overlap one another and blend into the landscape. They wanted to create something new, distinctive, but most importantly, adapt to the task, to the client, and to the local context. The Baco Master Plan follows the region's strong modernist traditions. Zaha believed it was critical to invest in public spaces that engage the city. She believed they were a vital component of a rich urban life and cityscape, uniting the city and tying the urban fabric together. This complex is centered in the heart of Belgrade's cultural zone. It is a population of approximately 1.23 million and lies 116 meters above sea level, meeting at the intersection of the Danube and Sava rivers. The climate is a humid subtropical climate with four seasons and uniformly spread precipitation. Belgrade is home to many ethnicities from across former Yugoslavia. The main ethnic groups are Serbs and Romas, 
Many people came to the city as economic migrants from smaller towns and also many as refugees from Croatia and Bosnia in the 1990s. Lying on the main artery connecting Europe and Asia, Belgrade has been a popular place for travelers. Because of this, they host many international cultural events, including film and theater festivals. Belgrade is particularly famous for its nightlife. The people love to celebrate. This comes in the form of food. Celebrations consist of meal after meal. Wealth is displayed through eating as opposed to their economy. Zaha Hadid was a very unique architect. When technology began to integrate into the architectural and design world in the 1990s, she chose to incorporate small aspects of it but stayed strong to her ideals and still continued to hand draw her buildings and models. She felt that the computer and technology would limit her designs, something she was not, not found, fond of. She had a particular way of expressing herself through art and it allowed her to showcase her creativity the best. Her architectural firm plays a big part in the way the company designs. The company makes use of parametric design software, such as Grasshopper and VR software, also known as virtual reality. So much so that a new branch of the firm has been created called Zaha Hadid Virtual Reality Group. They work to incorporate VR technology into architectural design, including real-time modeling and visualization tools. They want to be able to enhance the architectural design process by incorporating VR potential. The next building of Zaha's we will explore is the aquatic center design for the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. This indoor facility has two Olympic sized pools, a 25 meter diving pool with boards and platforms, dry diving zone, a state of the art 50 meter station gym and cafe. Although it was built for the Summer Olympics to be used for swimming, diving, and synchronized swimming events, it is now accessible facility open to the community. The architectural concept of this building is inspired by the fluid geometries of water in motion. It uses inspiration from the surrounding environment that reflects the riverside landscapes of the Olympic Park. The roof is meant to sweep up from the ground like a wave which encloses the pools with a unifying gesture of fluidity, while also describing the volume of the swimming and diving pools. The Aquatic Centre in Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park is located in London, England. The park was created to house the 2012 Summer Olympics. It housed the Sporting Events and Athletes Olympic Village, the London Stadium and the London Olympics Media Centre. The park covers four different areas of London. The building site was originally undeveloped land. London has a temperate oceanic climate. Summers are generally warm, sometimes hot. Winters are generally cool, with temperature variation. Heavy snow is rare, but snow usually happens at least once each winter. Spring and autumn can definitely be pleasant. London has a diverse range of people and cultures, with more than 300 languages spoken. In 2018, it had an estimated population of 8.9 million. It is considered one of the most popular cities in, in the world and is known for its cultural events that it hosts more than any other city in the world. Events such as music, live comedy, film festivals, and fashion shows are known globally. Approximately 59.8% of the inhabitants of London are Caucasian Christians. The largest religious group are Christians, which is evidenced by the large number of churches. To handle the complex geometry involved in, in the design for both the roof and the main concrete building, the team is at the London Aquatic Centre made extensive use of 3D modeling. The team also incorporated a lot of sustainable features. The building uses 30% less potable water compared to other pools and incorporated rainwater harvesting. Secondary aggregates and cement were used to reduce the concrete usage in the building. Effective sustainability measures like insulation and envelope air tightness and the use of daylight were built in from the beginning. The main pool hall is naturally lit throughout and the pool tanks are insulated an adaptable environmental control system works with large volume of the hall, 
using a ventilation system split into local zones that can be turned on and off to meet demand. The legacy of Zaha Hadid very much lives on in her buildings. Her mentor, Ram Kulhas, described her as a planet in her own inimitable orbit. She truly stood out amongst architects and paved the way for women in the field. Zaha designed and built for the people who would use the buildings, for which a lot of her compelling designs were symbols of hopeful futures. By the 21st century, it was clear that Zaha, one of the few architects to be widely recognized by a forename alone, was not simply the best known female architect of all time, but also one of history's greats.